Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. So we've already done the five day forecast. You can find the video to that on the home page. Just scroll down a bit and it's underneath the uh, link. As is also a written version of five day forecast, which you get to via the buttons at the top of the page. This is the uh, 40 day look here from the Bayesian Climate Centre. We do this every Wednesday afternoon now. Have a quick look at the Bayesian Climate Centre to see what it's showing for the 40 days. And this is going to take us into the uh, first 10 days of October. So we're going right into to the middle of the autumn with this particular update. So bringing on with that, just a very quick say about the ads. Just links to articles on all of the pages at all of the pages. Have a browse with widgets and click through the links if there's any articles that you're interested in. Thanks very much for doing that. Uh, so we'll start off with 500 mil of our height anomalies, which are broken down to 10 day periods for the next 40 days. Then we'll have a look at the corresponding temperature and precipitation anomalies that go with these charts. And just to say, long range forecast is very experimental, so uh, it's not to be relied upon. Just heads up of what the model is suggesting uh, for today's update. So we'll start off with the first 10 days of September. This is day uh, days 1 through to 10. Uh, it takes us from the 1st through to the 10th of September. Blue is extrapolating to uh, low pressure, below average heights, uh, yellow, red, orange, or brighter colours, extrapolate to above average heights, which is high pressure. So for the coming 10 days, it's placing a ridge of above average heights to the south and below average heights to the north, which means the jet stream is going something uh, like that. This could be a rather changeable, particularly for the north and west. It's also going to be quite warm, I would have thought, with temperatures likely to be coming out above average there through the first 10 days of September. Now, the next 10 days, this is, this is uh, days 11 through to 20, uh, and it takes us from the, uh, from the 11th through to 20th of September. Uh, this shows high pressure uh, really dominating. We've got above average heights sitting right over the top of the country and extending into much of Europe as well. The jet stream is going a long way to the north, uh, so this looks, well, it's certainly an Indian summer taking place there. There'll be loads of dry weather and pretty warm temperatures as well, I would have thought. Remember, it's in September, so nights are always going to be cooler uh, and there could be mist and uh, fog patches around by night in the morning. But by day, that looks really quite good indeed. So certainly a suggestion for the first half of September that we can get a lot of warm and dry weather. However, we go through to the final uh, 10 days of September. This is going from the 21st through to 30th of September, days 21 to 30. And uh, it's a bit of a change then. We've uh, lost those below average heights. I've got slightly, uh, or we've lost the above average heights. We've replaced them with slightly below average heights. So uh, low pressure is coming back there uh, through the final sort of week to 10 days of the month. It's also going cooler as well with the jet stream starting to go a bit to the south around that trough of low pressure. And then finally, days uh, 31 through to 40, which is the first through to the 10th of October, places the ridge of above average heights out to the west through the central part of the Atlantic. And then we have to come over here onto this side of the chart with a trough of low pressure over Scandinavia. In between the two, we will be bringing the winds down from the northwest southeast uh, trajectory. So I think that is significantly cooler there as we're going into the start of October. Um, winds are going northwest to southeast with jet stream and probably quite unsettled, especially to the eastern side of the country, driest in the west. But I think the main thing you'd notice there is a drop into much more autumnal type temperatures. So that's how the 500 mm heights are looking for the next uh, 40 days. What about the temperatures? Well, this is uh, the first um, 10 days coming up, which is the first through to the 10th of, uh, of uh, September. Again, this is temperature anomaly. And we see temperatures significantly uh, above average, generally coming out around 1 to 2 degrees, warmer than average for the course of the coming week. Most of Europe as well is coming out quite warm, although it is cooler up over Scandinavia. So we would expect to warm uh, 10 days to start us off through September. The uh, next 10 days, the 11th to the 20th of September, also significantly warmer than average. I think we're going to around maybe 2 to 3 degrees above average there. Uh, so again, very warm first half to September being predicted by the model. However, it's much cooler as we go through to the next 10 days. This is the 21st through to the 30th. 
possibly still ever so slightly above average, but that's certainly a significant drop in temperature taking place there compared to what we see uh, through the first half of September. And then finally, we get through to the last 10-day uh, period, which is the first through uh, to the 10th of October. And that one, again, it isn't that far from average, but it is significantly cooler compared uh, to what we have through the first half of September. So it looks like we've got a bit of a split here. The first 20 days, significantly warmer than average and a lot of uh, anticyclonic influences. The second 20-day period, um, which is the se end, of October, end of September into October, that turns much more unsettled and cooler. Let's have a look at the precipitation anomalies. Finally, so the first 10 days of September, generally come, coming out uh, drier than average in the south, but a bit wetter than average up in the north. The next 10-day period is when the anticyclonic influences are right out of the country, so that goes drier than average there from the 11th through to the 20th of September. Uh, but it's unsettled as we go through to the end of month, this is 21st through to the 30th of September, and uh, precipitation generally going a bit above average then. And finally, we get through to the last 10-day period, which is the first 10 days of October, the first through to the 10th of October. And again, precipitation is generally a little bit above average, uh, although it is driving average out to the west. Um, so that is indicative that out to the west, we've got a ridge, and then, of course, we've got the trough up to the east, uh, northeast of us, and the jet stream is going like that. So temperatures slide we go firmly into autumnal conditions and it is a lot cooler with some rain in the eastern part of the country. So I think the model is suggesting a pretty warm and fairly dry sort of first half to September. Um, and then the second half is likely to uh, transition um, probably quite slowly, but gradually we're transitioning to a cooler, um, probably more unsettled uh, second half of September. And then as you get through into October, uh, we're firmly into autumn uh, then. And uh, it's likely to be quite cool, I would have thought, with the uh, precipitation possibly a bit above average in the north and the east, but uh, near or normal further to the west. Um, so that's how it's looking for the next 40 days. Remember that uh, long-range forecasting is always experimental. It's just for fun. Uh, the charts are there, models are there, so you might as well look at them. But it is to be relied upon. If it's right, make the most of the uh, next couple of weeks, I would suggest, because as we get through into the middle of the last stage of September, that's probably when autumn properly uh, sets in. Right, that's all for now. Don't forget to check out 5-Day Forecast. I haven't done so yet. That's all now. Thanks for watching.